All right, so in the next little while, I'm going to do a few videos on nutrition education, both advanced and basic, and in terms of human biochemistry, uh, biology, hormonal function, and things like that, so that people can start getting grounded with a foundation of what the real research is saying. Because nutritionally, the times they are a changing, as the song goes. Protein is no longer the be all end all of a sound diet. Protein is no longer the hero. And if you follow the research, protein could in fact be actually a villain in what's making people sick or making it hard for people to lose weight and keep it off etc etc and certain studies allow us to get into the whys and the hows of why protein is such a problem even separated from saturated fats so i'm going to bring studies that actually talk about these things and here's one study here from uh, medical hypothesis 1999 you'll see that up on your screen right now vegan proteins may reduce the risk of cancer obesity and cardiovascular disease by promoting increased glucagon activity and it's that increased glucagon activity i want to talk about in this video so this is going to be advanced nutrition and I'm going to read a uh, little bits from the study and comment it as well so notice right in the title we'll put the title back up there again notice in the title vegan proteins the key word here is vegan proteins that have a healthy effect of reducing risks of cancer and obesity and cardiovascular disease and among the term obesity i want to include of course the word weight loss uh, getting in the way of weight loss is animal protein and then I'm going to read certain highlights because it uh, gets very technical and academic. I don't want to lose you all. I want you to benefit from the research that I'm going to present uh, from time to time here when I separate research from the overall research so people can follow along. So as you see here in this, in this uh, quote, soy protein, as well as many other vegan proteins, are higher in non-essential amino acids than most animal-derived food proteins and as a result should preferentially favor glucagon production which is a very important thing that i'll get to so as you should know by now from other videos i've done soy is actually healthy and protective and beneficial and this fear of soy because of estrogenic factors has been completely debunked uh, the phytoestrogens and soy are actually protective in terms of health benefits once again pop culture common knowledge does not live up to the facts borne out by peer-reviewed research but get back to the point of other vegan proteins higher in non-essential amino acids than animal derived protein foods and we'll see why that's important so we go down um, the the research gets a little more uh, convoluted in terms of academic stuff and, and really technical biochemistry and physiological stuff but the next important line is this one. We'll put it up here for you to see. The insulin sensitizing properties of many vegan diets, high in fiber, low in saturated fat, should amplify these effects by down-regulating insulin secretion. In other words, high carbs is good and positive effects regarding insulin and blood sugar health. So what increases insulin sensitization? Higher carbs, lower fat, higher fiber, exercise, elements of a vegan diet. Well, you're not going to get from a low-carb keto diet, and that's very important to point out right now from the get-go. And a lot of the problems that are associated with, with uh, disease down the road, uh, weight loss, uh, gaining weight, struggling for weight loss, have to do with insulin sensitivity. So the insulin sensitizing properties of many vegan diets, again, high in fiber, low in saturated fat, amplify the effects by down regulating insulin secretion while increasing insulin sensitivity furthermore let's keep this on the screen here additionally the relatively low essential amino acid content of some vegan diets may decrease hepatic igf1 synthesis hepatic just means liver so you can sound smart when you repeat that term igf1 we know now is leading to a lot of cancers etc so thus diets featuring vegan proteins specifically now the research mentions vegan proteins can be expected to lower elevated serum lipid levels which is a problem for insulin resistance diabetes cancers etc so vegan proteins lower elevated serum lipid levels 
levels, promote weight loss, and decrease circulating IGF-1 activity. The decreasing circulating IGF-1 activity should impede cancer induction and the spread of cancer as seen in animal studies uh, with soy protein, etc. So that's all up on your screen. You can read that over, let it sink in. And then furthermore, let me put this uh, part on the screen as well. In fact, vegans tend to have low serum lipids, lean physiques, shorter stature, later puberty, and decreased risk for certain prominent Western Western cancers. A vegan diet has been documented clinically uh, as documented clinically, efficacy in rheumatoid arthritis treatment, low-fat vegan diets may be especially protective in regards to cancers linked to insulin resistance, namely breast and colon cancer, as well as prostate cancer. So again, we'll put that up on the screen. Vegans tend to have low serum lipids, lean physiques, later puberty, decreased risk of certain prominent Western cancers, a vegan diet, has documented clinical efficacy in rheumatoid arthritis treatment. Low-fat vegan diets may be especially protective in regard to cancers linked to insulin resistance, namely breast cancer and colon cancer, as well as prostate cancer. So very important elements showing the health benefits of vegan proteins and how and why that works and the effect with glucagon. But Let's talk about the opposite effect. What about the ill effects of animal protein? So let's put this part of the study up on the screen. Conversely, the high IGF-1 activity associated with heavy ingestion of animal products may be largely responsible for the epidemic of Western cancers in wealthy societies. In other words, high protein diets can kill you or at least make you sick. How much is high protein? Well, some uh, guesstimates, some research are showing two ounces a week of red meat can increase your risk of specific cancers associated with uh, insulin resistance. Furthermore, let's put this up here. Increased phytochemical intake is also likely to contribute to the reduction of cancer risk in vegans. So plant-based versus animal-based protein is not even close. Why are no fitness bodybuilding gurus who disagree with this statement offering any credible research to the contrary. Why? Because it doesn't exist. This is the research. Now, this is 1999, this piece of research from Medical Hypothesis uh, back to 1999, almost 20 years old. But follow-up research reflects everything about this and is getting um, the ar argument is getting stronger and stronger. So let's go down further down the research. What we see next, I think, that we need to put up on the screen, an unnecessarily high intake of essential amino acids, either in the absolute sense or relative to total dietary protein intake, may prove to be as grave a risk factor for Western degenerative diseases as is excessive fat intake. So what we see in this study then is you can even separate the protein from the animal fat. So if you're thinking your egg whites are better than your eggs and your chicken skin chicken breast is better than your red meat, well, you might want to rethink that because as it says here, an unnecessarily high intake of essential amino acids, either in the absolute sense, meaning above the RDA, or relative to total dietary protein, can be as grave a risk factor for Western degenerative diseases as is excessive fat intake. So what do we see here back in 1999? Protein is not your hero, and you're not going to hear much of that in the fitness and diet industry because they can't profit from that little bit of knowledge. They're not going to be able to bottle black beans for you and sell them to you in their form. Although... Uh, vegan protein powders, etc., still exist, marketing the myth that more protein is somehow better. So why the question begs, just from this study alone, in terms of showing the effects of glucagon uh, from vegan proteins, why are you focusing on protein in your diet? Or even worse, why are you supplementing even more of it with branched-chain amino acids, which I'll get to in another video, uh, and or whey protein powders, etc., etc.? Stop it. The research is now coming out and it's overwhelming that more protein isn't better and it's a problem of overnutrition. So the accumulation and organization of the research has altered the reality of modern nutritional direction and trajectory. 
protein is no longer your hero. It's protein marketers that are uh, a solution looking for a problem to solve, whether your problem is gaining muscle, uh, bulking up, losing weight, blah, blah, blah. It all has to do with marketing protein in a canister, in a bottle, in a bar, or in a shake. And that's not what the research has to say. Protein should no longer be the cornerstone of any wise diet strategy, period, and neither should fat. So you can say, oh, wow, I'm, you know, my protein's low. I'm on keto and I got lots of fats. Well, I'll get to fats another time. Saturated fats are just as dangerous. So what I will get to in future episodes, essential amino acids like methionine and other promoters of methylation. You'll hear a lot about essential amino acids and the process and promoters of methylation in, re in regards to cancer, etc. But methionine and promoters of methylation because of animal intake do not make you healthier. They increase your risk of ill health. So once again, we witness the reality of overnutrition and the, the quote being the disease is in the dose. So thinking that you need more protein because you're trying to build muscle or you need protein to protect your muscle while you're dieting, this is all the cultural craze mythology uh, that keeps getting passed down on gym floors and passed around on gym floors as if it's fact, when in fact the peer-reviewed research suggests something else entirely. So furthermore, going out of your way to take in even more protein via branch chain amino acid supplements, whey protein powders, shakes, whatever is the bodybuilding and fitness industry advise you to do. That's a money-making machine for them, but a serious risk of ill health for you. The research is clear, regardless of the industry gurus who want to keep ignoring it. Boom, shakalaka, laka, boom, boom. This is just one study outlining the health benefits of vegan proteins and how and why by certain metabolic uh, pathways uh, they work to your advantage, promoting increased glucagon activity and the health effects that, that that induces and the weight control effects that that induces. And that's just one single study. And uh, I'll be bringing you what I consider um, imperative, important, groundbreaking studies from time to time, isolating them, of course, um, and because uh, you can't do... Um, 12, 13 similar studies in one video. So this is from, uh, we'll throw this back up there at Medical Hypothesis 1999. We'll just show the abstract up there and uh, you can uh, read the whole thing if you want. But it's vegan proteins that reduce the risk of cancer, reduce the risk of gaining weight and obesity and cardiovascular disease by promoting increased glucagon activity. Protein is not your hero. Protein friend or foe? Too much protein is a problem in the modern Western diet, and you've been led to believe that protein is your hero, when in fact, protein very often is your villain. If you're having trouble with health, you're having trouble with diabetes, you're having trouble with blood sugar, you're having trouble with losing weight, get off the protein emphasis and get into the healthy plant-based diet. I'll see you in the next video.